All right, hello, welcome to the weather update. It is the 22nd of May. Another kind of hot day today, not quite as brutal as yesterday, but still kind of hot. And uh, we're dealing with uh, some thunderstorms, actually, over the North Shore, showers and thunderstorms. Uh, nothing severe um, right now. There were some warnings earlier for some storms, actually. We're going to talk about that as well. Uh, but you can see uh, these storms right here that are right now over, it looks like, uh, Oyster Bay, north of Syos, and heading into Huntington. They had formed over the North Shore. You got a little light shower here that's developing. So this is the cold front coming through uh, right now. I'm um, looking at the radar here. This is the, let's look at this radar loop. Uh, so you can see those are the earlier storms there uh, on that radar loop. You can see they had some warnings, uh, severe thunderstorm warnings and special marine warnings out parts of the Hudson Valley and these storms here, which are not severe. Uh, but uh, still, there could be some lightning. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so let's look at the lightning detection here, and we'll see how much lightning these are producing. Not, not a whole lot. I did see some lightning um, uh, to the north of us, but not nothing really that close by. Uh, uh, but you can see some heavier storms over the uh, Delmarva area there, um, with more lightning over there. Looking at the satellite, uh, you can see. Uh, let's uh, look at the satellite right now and uh, show you again. There are those. There is the convection there, and you can see the brighter white. That's where the heavier storms are right there. Let's go to the other satellite, the MODIS satellite. Oh, well, look at the sky. The sky was like earlier. Just a hazy day with some sun and, cl and sun and scattered, very scattered clouds, but hazy, warm, and humid day. Uh, not, like I said, not quite as brutal as yesterday. Uh, let's go to the current temperatures right now, and you will see that we have temperatures generally around the 70-degree mark. You notice the winds have shifted now, and many areas to the north, that is a sign of the cold front approaching. Um, and you'll see here, let's get the dew points in here. You can see dew points dropping a little bit, still kind of humid out there, dew points in the mid-60s out there. Uh, so let's look at uh, uh, what the day was like at Islip today. Uh, and you'll see here that I don't think we got up to 90 today at Islip. Let's see, I don't think we did make it to 90. No, we did not. It was more of a sea breeze today, so looks like I only got into the low 80s. Um, throughout the day at Islip, uh, you can see there, definitely more of a sea breeze. It was still pretty warm in the, in the uh, inland areas, unfortunately. Uh, um, so let's go look at the high temperatures for today. And of course, we will go to one to ground as well. Uh, so let's look at the high temperatures. As you wait for them to load. There we go, all right, disregard that 104. So you can see North Shore, mid 80s to around 90 degrees. Uh, 84 was the high at Islip, so still got into the mid 80s, 86 at Farmingdale. Uh, and then as you work your way toward New Jersey, uh, you can see the mid 90s there, uh, 94 in Tom's River there. So 94 again, uh, so much hotter in Jersey by about at least 10 degrees compared to Long Island. Uh, and again, that's, we had more of a sea breeze today, so that helped things a little bit. Um, you can see still North Shore got a little warmer, uh, mid 80s but not as bad as yesterday let's go to the uh let's go to the uh, precipitation here so we can look at how much uh, well you know what screw this i don't want to use this site because they don't have as many i know it's an official site the weather and hazards data viewer but wonder map has way more stations to look at although the problem is because it's not official the accuracy can be called into question here but you can see cooler on long island still pretty warm in jersey there 78 in tom's river still um so let's take a look and see uh, how much rainfall uh, some of these storms put. Yeah, maybe a quarter of an inch. Not not that much rainfall came out of them. Um, you can see though these are where the storms are hitting. So 70 degrees. This is where the storm is hitting right now in Bayville. Uh, those areas right there are getting a thunderstorm. Not nothing severe, uh, but there is some lightning there. Uh, so let's take a look at what the day was like in Mineola. So we'll go to Carl. Look at the Carl PlayStation and take a look and see how warm it was here. No, it did not hit 92 here. No, I'm not buying that at all. Uh, here's the, uh, the problem with these sites, <laughs> as we know, is they, they, they their accuracy can be called into question. So if it's saying 95, there's no way it hit, got that hot here today. Uh, Got to pick one that's... What it is is they're not shading their temperature th sensors properly, so... All right, 90. This is a bar, right? So it probably got around to around 90 here today, uh, upper 80s to around 90, 90.1. You can see it was in the upper 80s, and then you can see at 3 o'clock it started dropping off more of a sea breeze there, uh, coming in and dropping off into the mid-80s there. All right, so let's, 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 
That's uh, a good idea. Well, yeah, we can also go look, go to go, go look at Garden City as well, so you get an idea what Central Nassau was like today. Uh, so they also got to around 90 degrees. I don't know what what's going on here with this. These little peaks. This is a sign that maybe their instrumentation is not working right. I don't know. <laughs> Again, this is an issue with a lot of these stations uh, that you have to you know keep in mind. Um, I still think we got to around 90 degrees today. Whereas if you were on the South Shore, you were probably a lot better off. Let's go to Rockville Center, where they probably did not see 90 today. So 87.7 was the high there. Still pretty warm. And look at look at what happened here. Right around 239. What is this? The temperature dropped like it went down from 83. Was this a shower? Down to 74. That almost looks like there was a break of it. Was there a shower over there or a fog bank that came in? I don't know what that's about. All right, now we're going to have to look at the radar rewind. Um, all right, let me go to the vent to sky. We're going to go to this. We're going to rewind the radar and see if there was anything at that time. I don't think there was, but let's see if there was. I don't know. There was no shower over there. No, no. So, yeah, I don't know what, what happened there. That's, that's really weird. Maybe they turned the sprinkler on. <laughs> That's the problem with these sites. Uh, <laughs> like I said, the accuracy can be called into question. Let's go look at Babylon, which is where I was this evening. I actually took a little walk to the lake. And uh, it was beautiful, and it was cool, and it was a nice breeze. So let's see what there is. 78! Oh, man. See, that's well, that's the South Shore for you. Only 78. Look at that. What we were dealing with, it was good, 10 degrees cooler than we were today all day. Unbelievable. There you go. Much cooler on the South Shore. That's classic example there of course it's a little further east so maybe you could say low to low 80s here and like let's go look at mass Pequa park and you can see uh, what it was like there i like going over all these 82 so yeah when you get into nassau county south shore wasn't like in the low 80s still beats t temperatures to upper 80s to around 90 which is what we were dealing with here in mineola uh but it could be worse it could be in jersey i guess of course if you were right at the beach I'm uh, sure that, uh, let's see, Fire Island Lighthouse, probably where highs were only in like the low 70s. Only 60s. Oh, man. Lucky them. But look at what happened here. So they were only in the 60s. Take a look at this. And then as the thunderstorms approached, the wind shifted off to the north and the temperature shot up. Isn't that interesting? But yeah, if you're right on the ocean there, you were only in the 60s, man. That's the, That was the place to be, really. Um, but uh, yeah, right on the ocean, much, much cooler. Uh, and if you're inland, again, looking at Ridge here, uh, you can see here, they probably got to the, uh, well into the 80s today, if not 90s. Uh, 90, no, no, that site's not working right. <laughs> I believe they got into the mid, probably mid 80s. Uh, let's see, we can maybe find another site here. It's a little, I think this site's a little more accurate. Hopefully. So 87.3, yeah, so it was about 87 there. Not, so it was pretty hot on the south shore. So it was 87 in Ridge, but if you go down to Bellport Yacht Club, and like I said, part of Bellport is full of preppy people, especially the southern part of it. It's very nice, but it's full of those kind of people. Uh, only 67, yeah, so 67 versus 87. So you got almost a 20-degree difference between Bellport and Ridge. That's pretty incredible right there, so... There you go. And if you go a little more inland and go to North Patchog here. You'll see that. Uh, they got up to 84. So there you go. Big difference. Just a little bit inland. They were at 84 already. So you really need to be right on the water to really enjoy the best of the sea breeze today. If you were just a little bit inland, you know, then it would have been a little warm for you. And of course, the humidity was high and all that other stuff. So it could be worse, though. You could be in New Jersey, where uh, we all know how much worse it could have been. So let's go look at this site, for instance. I think we looked at this site yesterday, and we found it was a little off. 97.9. Yeah, there was, that's, that's what they were dealing with, all right? That's the kind of heat they were dealing with. Mid-90s again in Tom's River. Brutal. Uh, so let's go look at the uh, models now. And we went over the kind of weather we had today. And let's go over and look at the models and see. You see what we have here, a cold front here. Uh, if we look at the weather map here, 
you will see a cold front here that's going to slowly move through our area this evening and bring relief from the heat and the humidity. All right. So uh, and this is as a result of a trough that is coming through. And if we go with the uh, look at the upper air here, you will see there's a very shallow trough that's going to come through here. But it's very shallow, and you can see it really, you can see the ridge is still kind of holding there. This is the problem we have in the east. There's still like a tendency for ridging. Uh, maybe toward the end of the period, there'll be a trough. Uh, but with that, and as we know, it all boils down to where that jet stream is. So if we look at the jet stream here, that's not the right one. If we look at the jet stream, you will see here, and it mostly stays to the north of us. And again, just crazy, just crazy. You know, it's weak, and it's mostly in Canada. And with that, that means we're going to be dealing with some warmth. Uh, so if we look at our temperature anomaly on this, uh, you will see here. Uh, tomorrow, we're still a little bit above normal. Then we go to around normal on Tuesday. Most of the cool air stays in the Midwest. That's where the coolest temperatures are going to be. And we'll be near normal this week, but then you'll notice it tries to heat up again a little bit toward we get toward the weekend. Not dramatically. It'll be a little bit above normal, but nothing terrible. Then uh, as we get into the last couple of days in May, we'll have some heat. But then it looks like it does try to bring a cold front through, and we have some cooler weather coming in. So hopefully it actually doesn't look that bad considering the jet stream. I mean, when you look at the jet stream in the upper red, it makes it seem worse than what's being forecast at the surface. But sometimes there can be a disconnect. That's why I don't want to really want to take these things too much. You know, uh, We can actually look at the official uh, Climate Prediction Center forecast uh, for the next uh, 6 to 10 days. And it does, unfortunately, have us above normal. And like I said, when you look at the upper air pattern, it lends to that. Uh, you know, precipitation would be below normal on the 6 to 10. Uh, if we look at the 8 to 14, also has us above normal and precipitation near normal. So with that, let's go look at the surface prediction here. And you'll see this cold front here tries to make it offshore. Kind of gets hung up a little bit. Air high is trying to build in, but then it looks like a wave might try to form along the front. Uh, the high does seem to hold it at bay, so it looks like it will be dry tomorrow and Monday. And then you start seeing that return flow set up again as you head toward Tuesday. And there you go again with the chances for showers and thunderstorms. They very slow. It looks like we may be dealing with the rain chances next weekend, unfortunately, which kind of sucks because it is the Memorial Day weekend, and we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, and then here comes that next cold front that would come through. All right. So let's take a closer look at our area, HRRR model first. We'll look at that. And uh, after these uh, showers and thunderstorms tonight, uh, we'll be dry tomorrow. Um, and then we'll have to watch again that this rain might try to creep into the area or overnight tomorrow night before shifting offshore again. Um, there's like a little wave there. Again, this front is kind of stalled out there. But the good news, the humidity is going to be coming to an end. Uh, you'll see these really ridiculously high dew points drop after midnight tonight. Dew points drop 50s, then 40s. I mean, nice dry Comfortable day tomorrow. Uh, the winds uh, will be northeast, and, and then they'll eventually become more onshore in the afternoon and the evening. And then uh, for Tuesday, we'll have an easterly flow. That's a cool flow for us, so it should be a cool day. So when we look at the temperatures, after today's heat, tomorrow will be a lot better. Uh, temperatures in the low to mid-70s, and then uh, tomorrow night we drop into the 50s. And then for Tuesday, highs upper 60s to around 70. Uh, with that onshore flow, it should keep us nice and cool and comfortable, uh, which is something I, I really welcome. Uh, so let's shift over to the GFS. We'll go a little more and look at the temperatures. Uh, and as we get into your Wednesday, uh, still pretty comfortable. All right. If we go to the dew points here, which I want to show, dew point and wind flow, you still see that easterly flow there, all right? Uh, and then uh, as you get to Thursday, you see that flow become more southerly. Humidity starts to increase, and as we get into Friday... Uh, we'll have that subtly flow. It will be humid once again. And uh, we're going to be dealing with warm, humid weather uh, for Memorial Day weekend. And again, chances of showers and thunderstorms. But it may not be raining all the time. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's go to the temperatures. And a little bit. All right, so here we are. It's temperatures Thursday, also comfortable. Uh, Friday, that's when we see temperatures start to increase. It's mostly humidity, so mostly mid top of 70s. So this is indicating when I'm not seeing these temperatures that high that we will have a lot of cloud cover and showers. Um, so uh, we won't see that much sun. And then you can see as we get some warm day itself, then it starts heating up again. And then we can have some hot weather to end the month 
um, for another cold front comes through and brings us relief. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, it looks like there would be some rain chances. Again, that's a ways off, but we can look at the rain here. Uh, the rain chances, and you see that we got those rain chances for the weekend there next weekend, though. To me, it doesn't look like a lot of rain would fall. I'll look at the total accumulated precip. Yeah, it's not really showing all that much, especially for the east end further west. These look like going to be convective type situations, scattered, so it won't be raining all the time, but it's not going to be a sunny weekend like we had, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll see what changes. Again, it's just the flow we're in. We're dealing with the stall front uh, that, you know, normally if we had a jet stream, the front would come through. Remember those days? You'd have the hot warm air, and then the front would come through, and this would happen all the time. You wouldn't have front stall out, but because... We don't really have a jet stream anymore. That's what. That's why we're seeing where I'm seeing. That's all, again, due to the climate crisis, the climate change, all caused by the burning of fossil fuels, which we continue to do as humanity moans about gas prices instead of giving up those gas guzzlers, getting a more fuel-efficient car, or even taking mass transit. What a concept. But uh, not, not in the United States. All right? Other countries like in Europe, they got it. Most people take public transportation. They don't drive trucks. But no, not in the United States. We have to guzzle fuel like it's going out of style. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's uh, go to the skies next. Because I think we'll be dealing with plenty of clouds this week, unfortunately. So if you're looking for any clear weather, we're not going to have it. Uh, you'll see plenty of clouds around, unfortunately, uh, throughout this week. Uh, partly sunny conditions. As far as a clear day, I don't know when that's going to happen. You can see, you can see what happens for the weekend. You can see this system just kind of gets stuck over us. Again, because we don't have a jet stream to move it along, it just kind of gets stuck there. So um, let me use a higher resolution cloud model, RGM. So we'll give you a better idea of what's going to happen for this week. So tomorrow you'll see we'll be having plenty of high, we'll have high and mid-level clouds. There will be sun. It'll be partly sunny. It just won't be, you know, clear. Um, and then for Tuesday, uh, we may be dealing with more in the way of clouds uh, with that east wind. Um, it'll be, it will at least be cool. And then plenty more clouds for Wednesday. So we'll be dealing with clouds uh, and at least it should be dry, but again, plenty of clouds. If you want a nice sunny, dry weather, um, you know, we'd have to change the region to maybe north central United States where maybe they have some clear skies. Oh yeah. They'll have they'll have more sunshine. So if you're in like uh the upper Midwest, Wisconsin, you'll have some sunshine there. Um, or if you're in the west like Flagstaff, you'll probably have more sun there, but uh, but for us, uh, again, just dealing with lots of clouds, but at least it won't be hot anymore uh, as we uh, end this this ridiculous heat that we've been dealing with. And again, we'll go and look at the Ventu Sky uh, site as well with the clouds, which I don't normally do, but we'll go ahead and look at that as well. Uh, tomorrow noon, you can see plenty of clouds around. Um, luckily, no precipitation, just clouds. Uh, but uh, we will have plenty of clouds tomorrow. Probably it won't be all that much sun. Uh, same thing for Tuesday. Actually, Tuesday, it's actually trying to bring in some sun. So we'll see what happens. If we can push this cloud bank offshore a little bit, maybe we can get some, some sunshine in with that nice east wind. We'll have to see what happens for Tuesday. Uh, but that is going to wrap up this weather update. At least it's going to be cooler because look at those temperatures. 60s only. Maybe, maybe we'll be in the 60s to around 70s. So none of this... This heat, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I don't like the heat. And uh, you know, <laughs> you know, some people like it. <laughs> we all know who that person likes to comment is, and I'm sure he'll comment again and again. You know, you can like the heat, but uh, I like look. I like I like the way it used to be. We had heat, but then we had cold fronts come through and cool it off, and we'd have nice sunny weather behind those. We didn't have this stall front syndrome going on because we used to have a jet stream, but we don't have a we don't have a jet stream anymore. Uh, well, we'll look again at this thing, and I'll explain to you where the jet stream is. Look at that. Uh, it's, it's a mess. Look at look at this thing. It's, it's just a mess. This is not a normal jet stream pattern. Or this is Tuesday, so it's actually a little better on Tuesday. But you see, it's just you get this huge ridge, just these ridges. and I mean, I mean, that's not normal at all. But it does. it looks like it's showing a trough. All right, this is interesting now. This must be a different model. It's using the icon. So the icon, looks like it's bringing a trough through and actually it does move through. So this is the icon model. I think this is why it looks a little different. Let's go to the GFS, which is a little... Yeah, GFS is completely different. So, all right, so we have a divergence for the weekend. That's why I always just look at the GFS. I should look at some of the other models. So if you, look, if you looked at the icon, you can see 
You see what goes on. We got a cutoff here, and the jet stream's a complete mess. This is the GFS. All right. I mean, that is that is a mess of a jet stream right there, right? So whatever reason. The icon has a completely different look. So if we go back to the tropical tidbits, which is now we're, what we're going to have to do, because usually I don't expect models to diverge like that so much. Uh, let's go to the icon model. All right. So the icon model is completely different. The uh, icon model actually brings this front through and has the high pressure building in. See, that's what should happen. That's what would happen in a normal pattern. Uh, but I, I don't think this model is correct unfortunately, as much as we'd like to see that. Uh, we can also look at the European model and see what it's doing. Um, but you can see the European, I think, is resembling more of the GFS uh, with this just messed up jet stream. And again, the icon just reflects more in history instead of what's actually going on in the atmosphere, which is, I think, what we're seeing. But, hey, beggars can't be choosers. At least it won't be hot anymore. But I know I would like some sunny skies, some blue skies, some dry air, some temperatures in the 70s. But, uh, you know, you know, a nice blue sky, you know, it used to be very easy to get those nice blue sky days years ago. But now uh, without a jet stream, uh, without much of a jet stream and the jet stream coming all whack of whack, uh, it's harder and harder to get those, uh, you know, uh, especially, you know, at this time of the year, because you've got that damn Atlantic Ridge that just pops up and just blocks everything uh, instead of just moving along and having a front come through and enjoying some of this nice dry air out west. Uh, you know, it just gets hung up time and time again. That's not normal. That's all part of climate change. And I'm going to keep talking about it until I drill it into people's heads. Give up the pickup trucks. Give up these SUVs. Melt them down. Build more railroads. we got to stop treating the planet like a toilet. Thank you for watching.